God touched you through the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and brought you into the house of God. And you're here this morning for no other reason than except that Jesus Christ died on the cross and Jesus Christ loved you before you ever loved him. He loved me before I ever loved him. But praise God this morning, now that I return that love, did you ever, when you was a kid going to school, you fell in love with that cute little girl? You were only about 12 years old. And before you thought she was 30, and you thought she was a pretty small thing, and you just thought, well, that's who I'm going to marry. I'm going I'm to try to get her. And you didn't know what she's talking about. She wouldn't have anything to do with you. Your heart was broken. Now, probably everybody in here has had your heart broken a time or two when you're about 14 or so. But you found out, you know, and then you've grown on up. Then you've seen and thought the living life, and you found out what life was all about. And then you run across the one that God wanted you to have. And when you did, 30 years later, you saw that other woman on the street and thank you, Lord, for unanswered prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Now, you know when God's in something, you know that God's in it. And if God's not in it, then leave it alone. But I want to tell you this morning, some folk seem to think they're too good to come to church because there's so many hypocrites down there. They think because somebody in the church is doing wrong, well, they're not even saved. Well, listen, folk, I want you to come to church. I don't care what you're doing. Hickory Grove Church's door is open to you. If you're drinking, if you're cursing, if you're refabbing against God, if you're a fornicator or adulterer, whatever you are, I just love to see you walk through those doors and come in and find a seat in this church so I can tell you about a better life, a greater life, and a more glorious life. Because I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to tell you there's a better way. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad this morning that you found a better way? There's a better way. I don't recall the time in the Bible. I don't go up to people the first time when I witness to them. I, and I meet them. I talk about a lot of other things. And then maybe, and I'll let it slowly get around to the type of typical church. I don't blab out, oh, I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm there. Sometimes I'll talk to somebody and meet them several times. They'll never know that I'm a preacher. But I pray to God that the way I act, the way I conduct myself, and the conversation we have, they'll see that it's different from the world. And somehow they find out that I'm a preacher. They find out where I preach. And then I don't jump on them. Oh, you just got to come to church. You're going to hell. You need to come to church. If you don't come to church, I ain't going to come in here no more. All that stuff. No, I'll let it go on and on until they say, you know what? I'm going to come out to your church one day. Isn't that right, Donna? Say, I'm going to come out to your church one day. Well, praise God, Donna did come out to the church one day. And praise the Lord, she's sitting here today. And that's because that God loved Donna before she ever set foot in this church. And thank God she's here today, not because I'm a preacher, not because because I'm something great, and not because Midge and I talked to her, but praise God, because there's something different about somebody's life that knows God and a person that's trapped in problems and sorrows and discomfort and tearful in their conversation. They know that's the kind of life I want, and praise the Lord, I got good news for you this morning. If you're in that condition, I'm telling you about a God that loves you, and Jesus that loves you, and he can bring you out, not only did I have that kind of life, but you can have that kind of life just as well. I've had people to tell me, preacher, I don't think God would fool with me. You don't know what I've done. Why well, I'd walk in that church, the roof would fall in. I want to tell you, i will tell them, I say, you think you're bad. I've seen people in my time would make you look like a Sunday school teacher. You're not that bad. There's nobody too bad to stay out, and there's nobody too good not to come in. Hallelujah. There's nobody too bad to stay out. Nobody too good not to come in. Now there's some folks got so good, I don't think I need the Lord or the church. I can live it by myself. I guess you might do it, but you'll be a hard job living it by yourself. I missed church last Sunday. I told me in first of the week, long about Wednesday, I said, I'm getting lonely to go back to church. I'm getting hungry to go back to church. I said, you know, I want to go. Well, she was sick Wednesday night, and she still couldn't come. 
but thank God when I got here Wednesday night, wasn't a whole lot of people here, but praise the Lord, the one was here I knew that would be here. He was sitting on the throne in heaven. He was looking down. He was smiling upon us, and I got a blessing in my soul that was worth more than anything else in this world. You know why? Not because I first loved him, but because he first loved me. Now, there was a woman in the Bible who had a twisted life. Jesus did not, uh, uh, did not sneer, and he did not turn his nose up at sinners. The people that Jesus couldn't get along with is the same people I can't get along with. I can't get along with people that think they're so perfect and better than everybody else that, that they have the right to condemn and talk about and run down everybody they know because they're living better than they are. Look what they did. Look what they did. You know, they point finger. When I point a finger at you, I got about three pointing back at me. I'm not here to point a finger at you this morning and tell you how bad you are, how honored you are, and, and what sin you're living in. I'm here this morning to tell you that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried in the ground, but on the third day he arose, and praise God this morning, he wants you to come out from that life you're living and come into the glorious liberty as a child of a holy God. This woman, embarrassing life she was living. She was so open with it. These five men caught her in the very act of immorality. And what did they want to do? They wanted to gather up their basket full of stones and stone her. That was the law. Folks, we're not living under the law anymore. We're living under grace. You don't have that. Some people go back to the law and try to tear somebody apart with it. I want you to know I am free from the law, but I am fulfilling the law because the law was of God, but you can't live the law without Jesus Christ. And when you get Jesus Christ, living the law is no problem because you don't want to steal. You don't want to do all these things because when Christ saves you, he takes the want to out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You look at sin at a different angle. You condemn sin, but you don't condemn the sinner. Now, these men gathered her up. So we know what we'll do. There's a fellow running around town talking about grace. There's a fellow running around town laying hands on people and he's, he's healing him. Well, let's just take her down there and see what he says. We'll trap him this time. We'll trap him. See what he's going to do with her. Why, she's the worst sinner in town. He won't, get, he won't have anything to do with her. Why, he'll probably let us stone her in the flash of an eye. They took this woman down before Jesus and cast her down at his feet. Started talking about according to the law, she's supposed to be stoned. According to the law. Listen, folks, the church is not here to stone you. The church is here to tell you about that Jesus rolled away the stone. Jesus rolled away the stone. I have no right to be mean to a sinner. I have no right to condemn you. But I have all the right in the world to tell you to come and let Jesus Christ come in your life and be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Jesus wrote something on the ground. I don't know what he wrote. Nobody knows. They've tried to figure it out, but nobody has any idea what he wrote on the ground. Jesus wrote something, but I know what he said. When he looked up at those men, he said, Ye that are without sin, 